Proverbs chapter 5, avoid immoral women. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise counsel. Then you will show discernment and your lips will express what you have learned. For the lips of an immoral woman are as sweet as honey and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is as bitter as poison, as dangerous as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave, for she cares nothing about the path to life. She staggers down a crooked trail and doesn't realize it. So now, my sons, listen to me. Never stray away from what I'm about to say. Stay away from her. Don't go near the door of her house. If you do, you will lose your honor and will lose to merciless people all that you have achieved. Strangers will consume your wealth, and someone else will enjoy the fruit of your labor. In the end, you will groan in anguish when disease consumes your body. You will say, how I hated discipline. If only I had not ignored all the warnings. Oh, why didn't I listen to my teachers? Why didn't I pay attention to my instructors? I have come to the brink of utter ruin, and now I must face public disgrace. Drink water from your own well. Share your love with only your wife. Why spill the water of your springs in the streets and having sex with just anyone? You should reserve it for yourselves. Never share it with strangers. Let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving deer, a graceful doe. Let her breast satisfy you always. May you always be captivated by her love. Why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman? Or fondle the breast of a promiscuous woman? For the Lord sees clearly what a man does, examining every path he takes. An evil man is held captive by his own sin. There are ropes that catch and hold him. He will die for lack of self-control. He will be lost because of his great foolishness. We're going to read chapter 6 as well. And I think that Proverbs 5 is a really good one. I think especially this day and age where it just seems like immorality is kind of glorified on television and social media and the exposure to things that children just shouldn't be exposed to too young. And I think it's important as I'm growing the Lord, I want to be more conservative. And I, I think I make a lot of mistakes because I live in Florida and it's very warm here. Um, but the more you want to start to seek to live for God and honor Him, you don't want to do anything to cause your brothers and sisters to stumble. And I think in the beginning for me, you know, I'm not a very prideful person, so you don't think that maybe you're causing any harm, that you'd not be anything tempting to anyone. But you should always think, how can you honor the Lord the most with your life and your behavior and how you dress and what you do and what you say? And on the other side of the coin, it's the same for men as well. Men should also make sure that they're being honorable. There are immoral men and there are immoral women. These are words of wisdom to both sexes because I do believe that there are men and women and both need to be moral and upright, walking in holiness and honor and righteousness. And yes, we will make mistakes, but don't do anything to cause your brothers and sisters to stumble. Chapter six, lessons for daily life. My child, if you have put up security for a friend's debt or agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement and are caught by what you said, follow my advice and save yourself, for you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now, sh swallow your pride. Go and beg to have your name erased. Don't put it off. Do it now. Don't rest until you do. Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeing from a net. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. What are worthless and wicked people like? They are constant liars. Signaling their deceit with a wink of the eye, a nudge of the foot, or the wiggle of the finger. Their perverted hearts plot evil and they constantly stir up trouble, but they will be destroyed suddenly. Broken in an instant beyond all hope of healing. There are six things the Lord hates. No, seven things he detests. I think some verses say seven are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, 
hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in a family. My son, obey your father's commands and don't neglect your mother's instruction. Keep their words always in your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, their counsel will lead you. When you sleep, they will protect you. When you wake up, they will advise you. For their command is a lamp and their instruction is a light. Their corrective discipline is the way to life. If you keep it... It will keep you from the immoral woman. There she is again. There's a, wis there's a woman, of, woman of wisdom and there's a woman of immorality. Be careful who you choose to follow. And I suggest the woman of wisdom. From the smooth tongue of a promiscuous woman, don't lust for her beauty. Don't let her coy glances seduce you. For a prostitute will bring you to poverty. But sleeping with another man's wife will cost you your life. Can a man scoop a flame into his lap? and not have his clothes catch on fire? Can he walk on hot coals and not blister his feet? So it is with a man who sleeps with another man's wife. He who embraces her will not go unpunished. Excuses might be found for a thief who steals because he is starving. But if he is caught, he must pay back seven times what he stole, even if he has to sell everything in his house. But the man who commits adultery is an utter fool, for he destroys himself. He will be wounded and disgraced. His shame will never be erased. For the woman's jealous husband will be furious. And he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will accept no compensation nor be satisfied with a payoff of any size. I think we should do one more. Chapter 7. Another warning about immoral women. Wow. Follow my advice, my son. Always treasure my commands, obey my commands, and live. Guard my instructions as you guard your own eyes. Tie them on your finger as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Love wisdom like a sister. Make inside a beloved member of your family. Let them protect you from an affair with an immoral woman, from listening to the flattery of a promiscuous woman. While I was at the window of my house, looking through the curtain, I saw some naive young men, and one in particular who lacked common sense. He was crossing the street near the house of an immoral woman, strolling down the path by her house. It was at twilight in the evening, as deep darkness fell. The woman approached him, seductively dressed and sly of heart. She was the brash, rebellious type, never content to stay at home. She's often in the streets and markets, soliciting at every corner. She threw her arms around him and kissed him. And with a brazen look, she said, I've just made my peace offerings. Ugh, it's disgusting. <laughs> and fulfilled my vows. You are the one I was looking for. I came out to find you, and here you are. My, bre my bed is spread with beautiful blankets, with colored sheets and fine Egyptian linen. I've perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink our fill of love until morning. Let's enjoy each other's caresses, for my husband is not home. He's away on a long trip. He has taken a wallet full of money with him and won't return until later this month. So she seduced him with her pretty speech and enticed him with her flattery. He followed her at once like an ox going to the slaughter. He was like a stag caught in a trap, awaiting the arrow that would pierce his heart. He was like a bird flying into a snare, like little knowing it would cost him his life. So listen to me, my sons, and pay attention to my words. Don't let your heart stray away toward her. Don't wander down her wayward path, for she has been the ruin of many. Many men have been her victims. Her house is the road to the grave. Her bedroom is the den of death. And that's the end of Proverbs chapter 7. And we'll be getting into wisdom calls for a hearing. So there is a woman of wisdom and there is a woman of promiscuity and immorality. And I'm sorry, but I do believe that there is a man that falls into that portion as well. So women also be warned that there are men out there that will seduce you and encourage you to have your way with that person. But God has made it very clear in his word the right way to do things. And I do believe that he knows so much better than we do. So I do encourage you to follow the way that God has planned for us to live a healthy, holy, 
upright, righteous, blameless life, and we will fall and we will stumble. But beware, because we have been given warning, we have been given discipline and encouragement. I'm praying for you to stay strong, resist people that are enticing you to sin, to temptation, trust in God, pray for him to give you strength and wisdom and direction. And I'm praying for you as well. Make sure you spend time with God today because he loves us, he loves you, he wants to hear from you. And it's just an absolute blessing to have you here. So hope to see you soon and have a very blessed day. Bye-bye.